Hi, I'm Stuart Firestein, a professor of neuroscience at Columbia University in New York City. Improving science education in primary and secondary school is a question that uh, should take me about another two and a half hours to answer, so, but I'll try and come up with a quick one. Um, there is no quick and easy solution, of course. We operate under what I think people would call the tyranny of coverage. It seems there's so many facts, there's so much known, but I think the only solution to that, of course, is to stop concentrating on the facts. Science is not really about facts, it's not about memorization, uh, it's about questions. And it's about what we think of those questions and how to get answers to those questions. And the more we concentrate on the questions and the less on the facts, I think the better we would be at teaching science. So teaching curiosity, teaching the narrative of science, the way science often uh, runs into cul-de-sacs, little failures. If for some periods of time it's stymied or stalled. There are competing theories that we can't decide between. This is the real adventure of science. And I think if we made it more of an adventure, it would also be a more engaging subject. So I think the biggest problem with the idea of a scientific method is that it removes the creativity, the curiosity, the intuition from the process. It makes it sound as if there's a recipe. If you follow the recipe, you put stuff in, you crank the handle, and out fall gadgets and cures and findings and facts. But it really never works that way. And so it's a, even a bad explanation because I'm afraid it removes this critical notion of creativity and uh, intuition and curiosity. Scientists and the public, who always used to get along so well, um, but somehow or another these days seem not to get along as well, or at least there's some level of mistrust or suspicion that seems to run around. I think that's because uh, science is in a transition period, really, and I think the public has to come along with us in this transition period, but of course it's the responsibility of scientists to bring the public along. There are uncertainties, there are doubts, and now we have to learn to work with those and live with those, and we can do that, and we can bring the, the general public along with us if we don't just try and swamp them with a lot of facts and geeky kinds of knowledge. What could you learn from my new book, or what's the most important thing you could learn from my new book? I think, of course, the simplest and the most obvious is an appreciation that failure is not a negative, that failure is how we move forward in the same way that success moves us forward. Sometimes failure moves us forward more quickly than success because it tells us about something we didn't even know we didn't know. So we do an experiment because we think we didn't know something and then it doesn't work. And you think, wow, there must be something I didn't even know I didn't know because that's why this experiment didn't give me any kind of a result that I can make sense out of. So now you've really, I would like to say, increased your ignorance, but you've made it far more sophisticated. And you do that through failure. Failure is a real window into the true deep unknown. And we should appreciate it for that.